Adrian Florian. Hello, my name is Adrian Florian, and today I would like to talk about September 11th. First, I would like to start by showing you my picture. This is the Twin Towers. Where's the, where's the camera? So I can point at the camera. Right. Um, this is the Twin Towers as I saw them out of my bedroom window when I was growing up. That was me on September 11th, 2007, speaking out against the war in Iraq. I was walking down the street towards my house, and one of the city workers was crying, tears streaming down his face. And I asked him what was wrong, and he said, America has been attacked. So when I got home, everybody was gathered around the TV, wondering what the New York skyline should look like. They kept showing us the skyline and talking about how horrible it was. But since none of us were from New York, we had no clue as to what was missing from the skyline. It wasn't until the next day that we finally, somebody showed us a before picture and an at, before and after picture. So Adrian, can you show me your pictures of New York? Sure I can. This is my first picture of New York, and this is um, the Twin Towers. And this was taken out of my bedroom window when I was about three or four years old. And this next picture is the Statue of Liberty. And the next picture is this one. This was taken in New Jersey. Um, and I'm standing in front of the Twin Towers, but that's the Hudson River, which is between Jersey City and New York. Really? So you lived in New York or New Jersey? I lived in New Jersey. This first picture was taken from New Jersey. You can see right there is the river. Now you can zoom in. See there's the Twin Towers and there's the Hudson River right there and these buildings on this side were in New York and this side is New Jersey. Jersey City. Again. So where were you on 9-11? Um, at 9-11, on 9 just ask me again, I'm sorry. So where were you on 9-11? On 9-11, I was at my parents' house, and I woke up. My friend had called me to tell me that the Twin Towers were falling down, and later on that day, my friends came to pick me up, and we went down to Sandy Hook Beach, which is in New Jersey, and we could see the dust cloud from where the Twin Towers had fallen. And it was, um, it was coming at us. It was like expanding out away from New York. And it was coming across the, the bay towards New Jersey. So we stood there and we watched. And we started to cough and we started to wheeze. And we started to feel like we were maybe breathing in some of that dust from the Twin Towers. And that's when we left. But we didn't leave soon enough because... All of us were sick. My two friends who were with me and um, myself were, we were all sick for about four weeks, at least. From, I think it was from breathing in that dust. When I first found out about the Twin Towers falling, um, I found out when my friend Dan called me on the phone. I turned on the TV and the TV was all staticky. I couldn't get a signal on almost any channel. And finally I got a TV station that worked. At that point, I saw a video of the first Twin Tower falling, and it was like watching a bad horror movie. It freaked me out so much, I started shaking, I started having an anxiety attack. Within minutes, I was shaking in fear. I was soaked in sweat. I thought the country was under attack. I didn't feel safe in my own home. I didn't know, you know, where a bomb might fall next or where a plane might crash into next, and I was, um, I was sitting there just shaking in fear. That's when my friend Dan called back and he said that um, he wanted to go down to the beach. So Dan and I and our friend Amir um, got in the car and we went down to the beach. A few weeks after September 11th, um, my friend Amir was harassed by the cops. He wasn't Middle Eastern, but he has a Middle Eastern sounding name and he looked Middle Eastern, so he was harassed by the cops. 
He said he looked like a terrorist. So I was sick for about a month after September 11th. And for years after September 11th, I would have these horrible coughing spells where I would cough for hours and I would cough up thick mucus. I would cough up thick mucus and the mucus would taste like the dust I breathed in on September 11th. I was pretty sure that I was sick from September 11th and even years later I was still coughing out the dust I breathed in that day. And I wasn't even in New York, I was in New Jersey. So it makes me wonder what effect it had on the people who were actually in New York when it happened. I'm here at the computer and I'm on Google and I'm going to type in Architects for 9-11 Truth. And I can easily bring up their website. And then you get to the web page for Architects and Engineers for 9-11 Truth. And if you click on this Evidence button right here, you can easily get to this brochure. And it's a brochure about why the official story for 9-11 doesn't make sense. Basically, Architects and Engineers for 9-11 Truth is an organization of architects and engineers who build high-rise buildings like the Twin Towers, and they've created this website to explain scientifically why the Twin Towers could not have fallen from just the airplanes hitting them. So a few years ago, I took this class, a psychology class called Personal Growth and Adjustment. And this was my textbook, Psychology for Living. Um, and I found something in the first chapter of this textbook that really offended me because it was about September 11th. So I'm going to read the paragraph. The ending of the paragraph is about September 11th. And I'm going to read the paragraph right now. There exists in America a language of individualism that limits the way people think. We even celebrate independence, the word independence is in quotes, on July 4th. Many Americans today act independent of any cultural or social influence, being responsible to the self alone. As a result, we are becoming less committed to the common purposes of society, as is true for collectivist societies or early periods of American life, say in Zachary's lifetime, in which self-orientation was held in check by strong ties to the family, church, and community. But now that these ties are weakening, people are putting aside the public concerns that are necessary for the survival of a free and caring society. We are, however, still very good at coming together with others in times of crisis. Coming together is also in quotes. Witness how the whole nation pulled together when the World Trade Center and Pentagon were bombed on September 11th, 2011. Petty differences, racial hatreds, and attitudinal conflicts were set aside, at least for the time being. Now I'd like to explain why that paragraph offended me. First of all, I'd like to say that there's something wrong with this paragraph. At least if you believe the official story on what happened on September 11th, you would believe that an airplane flew into the World Trade Center and the Pentagon, but in this, in this book it very clearly says, when the Pentagon and the World Trade Center were bombed on September 11th, they used the word bombed. And then it says, petty differences, racial hatreds, and attitudinal conflicts were set aside, at least for the time being. Well, what about all of the Muslim Americans or Middle Eastern Americans or even people from India who just simply looked dark-skinned, who were, you know, beaten up because of their race? Random people walking down the street were beaten up. They had rocks thrown at them, they had sticks thrown at them, people screamed terrorist. There are a lot of examples where racial hatreds were amplified by September 11th. So when this book says racial hatreds were set aside for the time being, I consider this to be distorting history. Some people might have set aside their petty differences after September 11th, but some people became far more prejudiced. Some people used their racial hatred as an excuse to hurt others. Some people even use it as an excuse to go to war. I had an argument with my teacher about this, and I found the first part of the paragraph to be offensive too because it basically says in fancy words that Americans are selfish. And it basically blames it on the fact that we don't go to church. 
because it says that in earlier periods of American life, self-orientation was held in check by strong ties to the family, church, and community. So basically what they're saying is that modern Americans are selfish because they don't go to church. It's been 10 years since September 11th, and America is still in Iraq. America is still in Afghanistan. And America just killed Osama bin Laden, who's the one who's supposed to be responsible for all of this. So shouldn't the war be officially over? And I think that all criminals, even someone like Osama bin Laden, deserve a fair trial. I would like to take this opportunity to speak out against all unjust wars. I would like to speak out against the war in Iraq, and I would like to speak out against the war in Afghanistan. When President Bush first started talking about attacking Iraq, I didn't really understand why. None of the terrorists that were on the airplanes were from Iraq, and I didn't really think that Iraq had anything to do with September 11th. And I thought that um, September 11th was being used as an excuse to attack Iraq, and innocent people were going to die. And I've never, um, never approved of the war in Iraq. And I've spoken out about it. Um, I've spoken out against the war in Iraq several times. So a few years ago, I decided to go to the Board of Supervisors meeting when the Board of Supervisors was voting to pass a resolution against the Patriot Act. And I decided to take that opportunity to speak out against the Patriot Act and against the war in Iraq. There's me walking up to the microphone to speak. Hello, my name is Adrian Fulwine. So one of the things that's always concerned me since September 11th is that people in the Middle East think that all Americans hate them because they think that we all support the war. But I've never supported the war. I talked about this concern a little bit in my video about the protest in Egypt. What many people in the Middle East don't know is that when the war in Iraq started, thousands of Americans took to the streets to protest the war in Iraq, and thousands of them were beaten by the police or falsely arrested. Because in some countries, they don't show protests on TV because the media is controlled by the government. I also talked about this concern in my speech in front of the Board of Supervisors which you will now get to watch in its entirety. Thank you for watching my video, and if you like this video, please watch my other videos on YouTube. As the years have gone by since September 11th, it has become more and more obvious that the war in Iraq has nothing to do with September 11th. The people on the airplanes were not from Iraq, and because President Bush, because President Bush was able to um, to trick the American people and the American government into thinking that it was Iraq and invading Iraq, all of America's troops, America's troops and money have been wasted invading Iraq. As as it's become obvious that the war in Iraq has nothing to do with the people who actually attacked us on September 11th, it is only about oil and, and plundering Iraq of its, its oil. Support has gone down. Americans no longer support this war. So one of the things I have to say today is please do not be a part of Bush's agenda. It's not just, uh, it's not just passing a resolution against the Patriot Act, but every single day something comes across your desk that originated with the Bush administration. And you should vote no on everything, everything that's related to President Bush's agenda, because as we can see from the war in Iraq example, he does not have a good agenda. It's not an agenda that's about the American people. The economy in America is being destroyed because of the war in Iraq. And the other thing I'd like to say is we in America are in danger because people around the world hate us. 
people around the world hate us because they think we support this war. They think that America and America's president are one and the same. One giant entity acting as a mask, but that's not the truth. So, I'd like to say that this is a message to people in Iraq, the, the men, women, and children who are innocent and who've died because of America, and to people around the world. Today is September 11th, but tomorrow for many people around the world, especially in Iraq, it's another important day. It's the first day of the Muslim holiday of Ramadan, which lasts for a month. So it's not just September 11th, it's the start of their whole month when we're over there, Americans are over there killing them. Dear people of Iraq, please don't hate us. Please don't hate us Americans for what our President Bush has done. I'm sorry for all of the suffering, all of the injuries and the death that the American troops have caused on the people of Iraq. I don't believe in war. I don't believe in killing children. I don't believe in hatred. And I don't believe in torture. I don't believe that, that anyone, any man or woman or child who's innocent should ever die in a war. And I would like to say to the people of Iraq, please do not hate me for what my president has done. Please do not hate us. Please do not attack and kill innocent Americans, civilians, because we are not your enemy. The Bush administration is the one who decided to go over there and to plunder them for their oil and to leave the real terrorists to do whatever they want. Uh, and that's, that's what I have to say. All right, thank you, Adrian. Is there anyone else that wished to appear under public appearances? I see we have one other speaker.